the band Best Not Broken. And we've got a couple of guys from the band here with us. We're going to introduce Eric at the news desk. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Good to see you, Matt. And uh, Carlo on the couch? Right on the couch. How did you get the couch, by the way? Well, there's a, there's a story there, but I'm not sure we should go into that right now. <laughs> all right. All right. And, uh, Leave it alone. And, and who are we missing? Uh, and feel free to make up uh, a ridiculous uh, story about... Uh, wh- I suppose we could. Why, Probably that would be better than the truth. Right? I, I think, yes. <laughs> it's, more, yeah. it's more fun if, if you come up with a story, not to put you on the spot. Well, we're missing Mark. Mark is our bass player. Yes. And um, I'm trying to remember whether he stubbed his toe or if he hurt his wrist... It's a combination. I think he uh, stubbed his toe while hurting his wrist. That's that's probably what <laughs> so it was. So get a visual of that. Right, which has happened a couple times with Mark. And, yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> well, he's a very dynamic uh, individual, and he uh, moves around and jumps around a lot. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of times lands on his toe. Well, that's uh, that's understandable. Well, <laughs> Actually, there's truth to that. I think he hurt his toe last week, right? Yeah, it was. So that's not yeah. all... Well, thoughts Pim. and prayers for Mark. Thank you. Well, <laughs> well, welcome, guys. By the way, uh, now what do you guys, so Mark is a bass player, so what do you guys each do in the band? So I sing and play the guitar, and Carlo is in I charge. play some drums. Of, yeah, all percussion. So you got like a, it's like a power trio, basically, exactly. right? Exactly. But is there a fourth, is there a fourth individual who does? Yeah, there is. We've got another guitar player that uh, sits in with us uh, most of the time, Anand, and uh, yeah, we have... Mystery men that do all kinds of interesting <laughs> things with the band, but Anand is the most regular. Anand is uh, our other guitar player. Gotcha, gotcha. So is uh, Anand is uh, there only occasionally for live shows, or consistently, or uh, most of the time? So okay. it sort of depends on the on the on the event. You know, I mean, sometimes yeah. we're in acoustic format and it calls for a smaller yeah uh, a smaller thing, and sometimes it's a bigger thing, and so he does the bigger things. I guess is the way we'd most simply describe it. Gotcha. Yeah. G- gotcha. And uh, how long has the band been around? Because it lo- looks like you've got a fair amount of music online from what I saw. looks like you've been at it for a while. We yeah. have, yes, yeah. a long time. <laughs> well, not. I mean, in this room, I'm the young member, but uh, it's been for, what, more than 10 years? Oh, yeah, for sure. To the point that we don't like our, the music that we first wrote. <laughs> right, right, right. For sure, we're trying to move on from that. But, no, I think, uh, I think our first recordings were done in 2012. Okay. Um, and the band, you know, it started before that and sort of evolved. Uh, we actually kind of started as a cover band playing clubs here in Manchester and around uh, oh. Boston and Southern New Hampshire and um, slowly started to work our own material into uh, into our shows and eventually started to record that material. And so 2012 is when we started to start to push the original stuff. And mm-hmm. uh, so that's, I think, officially when we became an original band. Okay. Which it actually isn't as long as I thought. but uh, No, it seems shorter <laughs> it feels or yeah, longer. Right. I'm not sure. I know. I know. But anyway, we've been doing it a while. I always say, um, and I, I say it only half kidding, uh, I feel like uh, the, the COVID pandemic kind of created this weird time distortion thing where sometimes things that happened longer ago, they, they seem like they either didn't happen as long ago as they actually did, right. or they seem longer ago or something. It's really, it's really odd. Uh, and I run into that a lot specifically with musicians when we're talking about how, you know, how long ago did you record this or whatnot? Right. And, you know, I'll, I'll have a, I had a band in here recently. It was like they had, they had just recorded something in uh, like two years ago, 2021, but one of the members was convinced it was like 2018. It was, it's just interesting how that, how that works. Well, but, COVID changed the music business so much. I mean, all yeah. live entertainment, obviously, because we weren't gathering. And so it really changed it for a lot of musicians. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we're fortunate we have other ways uh, of paying the bills sometimes, but um, but those that were fully dependent on, you know, playing for a living had a really hard time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it seems like there's been some lasting changes, too, because, you know, when the pandemic started to wrap up and things opened up, um, you know, all of a sudden a lot of bands are playing out again because they can. But but then it's like now, uh, you know, I again, I I have a lot of different musicians on the show and, and different people have different approaches, but some of the bands I talk to now, um, they're kind of like, yeah, we're doing, you know, maybe one show a month. We're not really, you know, gas is expensive. It's, uh, you know, we can do live performances in our living room and stream it, <laughs> you know, um, and are really kind of, uh, pulling back, hmm. um, which to me is, is interesting. And it's, it's hard to fathom in a way because, so I don't, I don't play anymore, but I used to play in a lot of bands. And oh, my, did. my thing cool. was always, I just wanted to play out. I wanted to play as many shows as possible right. 
because being on stage was my favorite thing in the world. Sure. Yeah. I just wanted to, that's all I want. I mean, I was in, I was in a couple bands where we probably oversaturated because we played so much. Yeah. Right. But I wanted to be out there every weekend and I didn't care if we were playing the same bar two weekends in a row or, you know, which, you know, not a great idea necessarily, but I didn't care. And, um, but it's interesting now. Some bands are really kind of pulling back. And then there's others, you know, who are just, uh, you know, playing every weekend and and, yeah. and really, really trying to still push it. But well, uh, I think the period right before COVID, I don't, who knows what date that was, but that that summer season, we were we were actually very busy. Yeah, we, we were playing a lot all over the Northeast, touring uh, as far down as Virginia. I mean, it was we were very, very busy. And so we were gear, definitely gearing up for another very busy touring season and then you know, kapoof, yeah. but, um, and we certainly haven't returned to that. Like uh, to your point, a lot of bands, musicians yeah. have not returned to that hectic schedule of playing out as much as possible. Um, because I think we've all discovered that there's just different ways of getting the music out there mm -hmm. for, for people to listen to, especially as an original band, you yeah, know, right. just, we have to take advantage of all those methods and those methods were proven during COVID. We right. were able to get music to people, um, we actually did a, a music video during COVID. Right, we, yeah. we filmed a video, one of these, you know, hands off, you know, mask yeah. on kind of video things yeah. uh, for, for one of our, uh, one of our most popular songs, um, the name never next. Week. Oh yeah. Never next week. <laughs> and, uh, but it was actually a very clever video the way we did it. And I think it'll, it'll stand the test of time and one could look at it and say, oh, that's how they responded during COVID, or one could look at it and say, no, that's just a cool music video. Yeah. You know, it's got two different, I think, shapes to it, which is not exactly what we were going for, but it's how it turned out. Right, you know? right. So, yeah, it definitely changed the landscape for sure. Yeah, no doubt. Well, I always say, too, you know, we have to, um, obviously, you know, the pandemic was awful for uh, a number of reasons, but, you know, we have to find these silver linings where we can, and, and one silver lining is the timing of it. Because if, if it had happened 20 years ago, or even 10 years earlier than mm. it did. You know, I, we, we were fortunate that it happened at a time when we have all this technology. Right. And and it kind of forced people to embrace um, technology in, in ways that they hadn't before. But some of what we were seeing, like, um, you know, I, I saw examples of actually very famous and successful bands um, doing these, um, you know, these these uh, streams online where they're all they're all at home. But they're playing together, right? You know, and and for performances and mm. and you know, in lieu of, of touring, and um, pretty remarkable stuff. And I just I feel like if it had happened, if this had happened twenty years ago, you know, before we had things like Zoom and oh yeah, you know, social media, and you, everything, you wouldn't see anything. Probably, yeah, 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 yeah. Career ending, probably. Oh yeah, yeah. It would have been it would have been much worse in that sense. So we're lucky that it happened in a time when we have the technology. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Uh, you know, and it seems to happen about once a century. So hopefully we don't have to go through it ever again. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we're back, so. baby. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So you guys aren't so you guys now you're but you're you're playing out a lot, right? Just oh, yeah. but not not as much necessarily as before the pandemic. Yeah, I mean we you know we have different reasons. We have uh families and things that we have to be respectful of but uh, we you know like you we love performing and I think best not broken really throughout our history has been a live band that's kind of what we are and uh, yeah unlike some other bands that um, uh, they can put out material and never play and be okay with that that's kind of not how that's kind of not how we do it and yeah uh, so we're doing we're doing as much as we can I think you know we go through spells of being really busy and spells of slowing down a little bit but that's mm -hmm. the nature of the business but uh, we love every time we step on a stage. Is summer your busiest time? Sure is. Out? Usually yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. Usually is. Yeah. I think it yeah. starts like in May, goes through September. Yeah. You know, that seems to be the season where a lot of bands are out touring. And so we're either, you know, either supporting uh, some major acts or performing on our own. I mean, you know, I, I would say the last, uh, well, certainly this year and I guess last year too, right? We've kind of kept it a little more regional. We've right. been more yep. in New England, I suppose. Sure. And then we haven't really branched out from there yet. Right. But, you know, I'm not saying... We won't. It's coming, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but as you said earlier, you know, more selective maybe, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. the other thing for us is we, you know, we're in the process. There was, um, COVID wasn't great for us in terms of uh, producing material. Uh, and mm. uh, we're now we're in the process of putting a new album out. And uh, Excellent. So oftentimes the performances follow the, you know, follow the uh, the live recordings because you're out promoting those recordings. And so we we just released a song, I guess, three, two, two weeks couple ago. A couple of weeks, A couple yeah. weeks ago. Um, which is the first single on our next album, which is called "If If It Feels Right," 
EP, actually. It'll be probably six songs on it. Oh, okay. And the rest of it's coming out next month. So there'll be some shows that we do in support of that. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a fun one coming up. We're going to be w- with the Smashing Pumpkins up at uh, at uh, Bank of New Hampshire Pavilion. Really? In, uh, in Guilford. Guilford yeah. uh, what is that? It's two, two weeks from now. A couple I guess, weeks. Right? Yep. Excellent. Yep. Excellent. Congratulations. Yep. yep. Thanks. Very good. It's funny because our, you know, back in the day, we all used to listen to Smashing Pumpkins, and we still do sometimes. But our music, probably back then, was a lot more like them. It's evolved in a different way, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see how it, you know, how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the folks that are going to see Smashing Pumpkins, but uh, we're going to have fun either way. It'll be good. Have you guys opened for a lot of uh, a lot of big acts that have come through? We've had we've been very fortunate. Yeah, we've 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 done some good ones. I'll tell you one we did this year, which still sticks with me, is the. Um, now I forgot the name. Guess the, who? The guess who? Yeah, the guess who. The guess who? And 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 when that was first offered to us, um, I think there was some like you know the guess who? Who's that again? Kind of thing. And then you you queue up their collection, and their music is absolutely iconic. I, yeah. I mean, it defined a generation. I yeah. mean, that's absolutely pretty yeah. big stuff. So we were really honored to be a part of that show. That was over in Salisbury, Mass. That yeah. was a. Good show at the Blue Ocean Music Hall. Great, great venue. If you've been there, it's a wonderful venue to play and uh, and to see a, a you know some music. So, you know, every year we seem to get three or four you know good opening slots, uh, which gives us an opportunity to promote ourselves and gather new fans. And uh, you know, sometimes we get a few, sometimes we don't. But <laughs> I, you know, it's a, it's a it's a big live show, you know, and so yeah. for us, um, for people to see us live, I think they really get a sense of the fun that we're having and uh, and and the kind of music that we're making, you know, and hopefully get somebody to, you know, buy a few records along the way and listen yeah. to some music. But it's been good. We've been lucky. You guys have merch you bring to shows? We you do. Have a good amount yeah, of merch. we just yeah. came out with a uh, fabulous T-shirt. You know why it's fabulous? Because our pictures are on it. We've <laughs> never done a T-shirt with our pictures on it oh really and uh most of the feedback we got was what in the heck are your pictures doing on the shirt but no it's a, <laughs> it's a good group shot it's a funny we actually did the photo shoot for it in manchester yeah oh, right, right it was here street. in manchester yeah. uh on the old railroad tracks or somewhere up the road here and uh it was a cool shot we always liked that you know it was a cool photo right so yeah yeah it ended up being on a shirt and i don't know uh We've we've sold quite a few of them actually. We have, and the one thing we forgot to do is bring one here today. But that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna either come back or mail it yeah, to you will. to make sure you have. Yeah, 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 definitely. Cool, cool. Yeah, it's funny. I was just um, reading recently about how there was a time when um, people thought people in the music industry thought in terms of merchandise that you couldn't you couldn't put for a for a men's shirt. You know, for for women it was different, but for men you couldn't put pictures of a male band's faces on a shirt hmm. because dudes wouldn't wear a shirt with other men's faces on it. Interesting. Um, this was, uh, I had read something actually Rolling Stone had something about this from way back. Jeez. When I was a kid, actually, when Daryl Hall and John Oates, their manager at the time, Tommy Matola, who went on to do other things, but, um, that was, a, apparently that was a big discussion in that camp was, do we put out do we do we bother putting out men's shirts hmm. with Daryl and John's faces on them because are are men going to wear that? Right. And um and I guess even to this day people debate about that. But then it's funny because um, last week I had uh, Andy Klasensky. I don't know if you know him. He's a singer songwriter from the Seacoast. Mm, cool. He was here and just coincidentally uh, he happened to have uh, he was wearing a Michael McDonald shirt with oh, no Michael kidding. McDonald's face on it and I didn't even realize it but the, <laughs> I, at first and then the subject of Michael McDonald came up and I was like oh he's on your shirt and then I, and that made me think of you know that whole that whole discussion of uh, that debate about I had no idea that ever happened my my favorite album cover ever was the Poli- the I forget the name of the album, but it was the Police, and yeah. their, their three pictures were on it. And yeah. actually, we were sort of going for that kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, on this on this T-shirt, we didn't quite get it, but we made it our own. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fun. It's not. It's a more of a funny shirt. Yeah. You know, kind of goes with our vibe. You know, we're having yeah. fun, and you know, dressed in some sort of costume, and uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's just a funny kind of thing. But it is funny you mentioned merchandise. It's the first time we've done something. Normally, it's like some graphic right like something maybe it's the maybe it's the the, the ep cover or something but mm-hmm. yeah this time uh yeah we went a little we went a little outside and mm-hmm. i i'm gonna have to think about that now how many guys we should do a survey to see how many guys <laughs> yeah. have actually bought the shirt <laughs> right i mean uh, oh, i hope they do some have already so we know it's working a little yeah they have yeah yeah, yeah. i think hip-hop kind of changed that 
that stigma too of 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 guys wearing shirts with other guys' faces. Oh, because, sure. You Fair know, point. because once hip hop started to get really big, you know, it wasn't unusual to see somebody wearing a, you know, a Snoop Dogg shirt with right. Snoop Dogg's actual face on it. Right. But um, if only we were as cool as Snoop Dogg. I know. That's right. I know that guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that Still guy. Going. It's incredible. That he never stops. He's he's um, he's one of those few people who can be. You know, he can still be edgy with his music and whatnot right. and the swearing and everything, but also have that side to him that's very family friendly. Right. I, I, I'm not sure I can think of another example of somebody quite like that who occupies that space the way that he does. No, that's a good point. I'm not sure I can either. No. Yeah. No. Part of why I was uh, asking about merch, too, is it seems like, you know, because we were talking about playing shows and, and how expensive, it, you know, it's more expensive than it used to be to travel and so forth. And it seems like there's a push within the music industry now to for everybody to really sell more merch because it's the one thing, you know, as far as selling your music, you know, Spotify gives you, uh, you know, big you might, money, big <laughs> money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Big money. yeah. The streaming Roll services in. don't give you much. And. And, uh, you know, and touring, you know, a lot of your, uh, a lot of that money ends up going into your gas tank and, and, uh, paying for whatever else. And so it seems like merch is cause you can't download a t-shirt, right? at least not yet. Right. I thought when 3d printers came out, that was going to kill was the gonna merch happen, thing. Sure. And then it just didn't happen. I, I'm not sure why. Uh, but I guess it's a good thing it didn't happen because then, uh, that'd be another revenue stream indeed, down the, indeed. down the, down the toilet. Um, Melanie in the chat room says, uh, you know, Jay was just saying that he wished he had a shirt with Matt's face on it. <laughs> well, actually, now see my shirt. So, see, I've got these uh, Matt Connerton Unleashed shirts, but uh, that's not really. Oh, yeah, that's cool. But that's like a representation of my, it's not my actual face. It's it's like me as an anime character, you know. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I uh, quite see it from here. Yeah. Uh, Brendan McCormick, uh, he, um, very, very talented graphic artist who he designed the logo. And then we put it on the back of these shirts and uh, it's, <laughs> I remember when he showed it to me and he was like, um, he was a little bit sheepish about it. He, he didn't know if I was going to like it because it's a little outside the box. Um, and I was never into anime, but I, I knew enough about it to, I recognize that uh, there's an anime called Devil May Cry. And I, I only knew, knew this because I used to work in a store that sold DVDs. Okay. So we had an anime section. So when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, I love it. <laughs> and, it's been around. I have to see. This. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I, the, the, the shirt. The shirt might be a little faded, but he's uh, coming over for a first-hand look. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah. And then Jenny had shirts made up, and yeah, and the, that, that became the. Uh, we might have to steal that concept. The official logo. Oh yeah, yeah. we're going anime. Yeah, it's it's very cool. Nice. Have, have at it. Oh, Mike from Queen City Cabinetry says my son has worn that T-shirt, Matt. It's his absolute favorite. Yes. Uh, and Mike was also asking about the songs I played. Um, who write? Do you guys all write together, or who writes the songs? Yeah, I write everything. I, I and then I submit it to Eric for approval. Uh -huh. He uh, <laughs> throws it in the in the trash and rewrites everything uh -huh. in a more perfect sense. The truth is, Carlo <laughs> writes all of our bridges. No one is allowed yes. to write a bridge unless Carlo has approved it. But uh, yeah, so we, we, you know, it's um, every song is a little bit different. I mean, you know, I, I'm a songwriter and Mark, our bass player, is a songwriter. And yeah. um, so we both bring in a lot of ideas. Yeah. And uh, some of them are more fully formed by the time they get to the band and some of them aren't. And some of them sort of come together when we're together. But, you know, it's amazing. A lot of people say, I mean, we're joking around. A lot of people say drummers don't write, but it's amazing mm. what, you know, when when. Carlo lays down a pattern or rhythm, what that can do to kind of change the dynamic of a song and yeah. move it in a certain direction. So I, you know, it's, it's a very collaborative process, even though, you know, we're the guys playing the guitars and singing the lyrics and writing some of the stuff. It, uh, it, it doesn't work unless we do it together in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the drums sound incredible, by the way, where do you guys record? Because, uh, the, the drums really, because not everyone gets that right when recording, producing drums, you know, but you can hear every, you can hear everything, every Tom, every, I mean, it just sounds so good. Yeah, it's true. We've, we've been lucky to work with a, a couple of really good studios that um, um, really understand your point of making the drums sound good. You know I mean? Yeah. I'm obviously pretty biased towards the sound, <laughs> but you know, when you're, when you're building a piece of music, it, it starts with the drums, right? Yeah. And it starts with the drums and yeah. goes to the bass right away because that's the that's the foundation of it, you know. And so we we've, we've been lucky to have uh, a couple of real good producers work with us and and recording engineers that yeah understand that and get a just actually they get a very good sound. It's on the like drums. the foundation yeah. of a house. I mean, truly, you can't have a you can't have a good 
song the way we try to write songs unless the drums sound good we've we've yeah. made that mistake and we don't, never want to make it again yeah uh, but uh and i think today you know with hip-hop becoming such a big deal you know over the last 20 years and and so many contemporary songs relying very heavily on the rhythm and the groove it's like that you're hearing that and you're hearing the lyrics and the rest of the stuff in some cases just sort of washed out in the middle sure right? sure you, you yeah gotta, so people are looking for the rhythm and yeah they're looking for the groove and you got to get it right but uh we um Typically, we'll we'll record with Dave Minahan down at Woolly Mammoth Studios in Waltham. Dave, Dave. Oh, a, that's a name I've definitely heard. Yeah, yeah. you have. Well, Dave is yeah. a you know he's a Boston legend. Really, we've been yeah. very fortunate that he's uh, he's been willing to take us on. And um, but you know he uh, when Brad Whitford was not healthy, he was playing with Aerosmith, and um, he's played with the replacements. He's a guitar player too. Okay, with the replacements and. Uh, um, but he's a, an amazing producer in his own right. He's a great musician. We're fortunate now that he's kind of playing with us because he's actually on most of the yeah. most of the songs oh, that is we're he? putting yeah. out now. Yeah. Um, in fact, he did a, a lot of the uh, background vocals for one of the tunes that's coming out uh, next month, which oh. which I'm excited to, to put out called "That's the Way She Likes It," and it's um, kind of a song that draws on influences from some of the '80s and '90s stuff, but real heavy um, background vocals, which are very cool. So, yeah. Oh wow! Looking forward to that one, but it starts with the drums. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. How how did you get to working with uh, uh, Min Minahan? What's his first name, Mike? Dave. Uh, Dave. Dave. Dave Minahan. Dave. Minahan. Yeah. Dave. Uh, he moved to Waltham from uh, the Boston area many many years ago, and I, I think it happened because I was reading a story about his move to this new studio, and it was just about the time I was getting ready to record my first batch of songs, and I was looking for some help, and I sent him my stuff and I said, what do you think? Thinking that he would say either nothing or, <laughs> right. or I don't think much. But uh, fortunately he said, hey, actually that's pretty cool. Why don't you come down and we'll talk a little bit? And I did. And um, and that was the beginning. He, uh, We did an EP that was again back in 2012. It took us a while to record that. Carlo knows we take too long to record, especially when I'm by myself. But, <laughs> um, uh, but it came out really well. The funny thing is I went in with a completely different vision of what we ended up with. And I, at the end of the day, I don't know whether it's good or bad. You know, I was at the time actually going in more of a synthesizer, you know, type of direction. And, yeah. And Dave sort of brought it back to more of a, an acoustic guitar based, a um, little bit more of a classic sound. Yeah. Which worked really well for those songs. And he was probably right. Yeah. Um, but we've, you know, we've managed over the years to weave in some of the new stuff and keep some of the, you know, the more traditional organic sounds, acoustic guitars and electric guitars and that kind of stuff. But yeah. Uh, there's a couple songs on that first album, though, that continually get requested at shows. True. Um, so, I mean, it's funny. We've played them. It, it's an older piece, but it, it seems like they're the ones that, you know, yeah. people want to hear. Yeah, those that have been around for a while, they, yeah. they remember some of those tunes. Pretty Good Day is the one that, that stands yep. out to me that was on the yep. first album uh, that people tend to like. But uh, we like the new stuff, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, are, are you guys from Boston, or, or uh, are you... We are from the gen here, we're or? from the general area. We've sort of bounced back and forth between uh, Boston and Southern New Hampshire. The band yeah. collectively, we've um, our members have sort of zigzagged around the area. So we kind of consider ourselves a greater Boston band. Um, yeah. Uh, but right now we've got some roots in Southern New Hampshire, and um, but the area has been very good to us. We've um, you know we kind of started in Manchester and sort of grew from there. You know we have regular stuff we do now up in Burlington and. Mm. Um, and we've, you know, as Carlos said, we get down as far as Virginia. New York has been a more regular thing. We haven't been down there in a while. Cause Philadelphia. We, uh, Philly, we haven't had stuff to promote. But I think probably that's uh, coming up in the not-too-distant future. Cool, cool. Very good. Well, um, actually, why don't we uh, we'll, uh, take a break and play another track here. Uh, let's see. You sent me. Oh, it didn't one of the things, you didn't send me this one, but you said there's a new single that came out recently? I did. It's called... I don't belong, and I thought I sent it to you. Oh, but... you did send me that. Okay, no, you did. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't know why I was. I for some reason I thought you had said something else, but um, my brain is mush sometimes. Well, I probably have a ours I... often is too. <laughs> yes, we do some of our best work when our brain is mush. <laughs> Here we go. Carlo does at least. Here we go. I got it. Okay. Here it is. Um, yeah, I like actually. Yeah, I like this one a lot too. This is really good. 
Um, so let's do this. We'll uh, we'll give this a listen. If you're just joining us, we've got uh, two of the guys, uh, Eric and Carlo from the band Best Not Broken, are here with us live in studio. And we've been talking, and we're going to listen to another track here. So this is called I Don't Belong, and this is the newest single just within the last couple of weeks. Yeah, just out? out two weeks here, two and a half weeks ago, I guess. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, check this out. I Don't Belong from Best Not Broken. I'm walking in a homeroom, everybody boom boom. I see my kicking sideburns and watch the girlies' heads turn. I got my jeans pegged, mullet done with hairspray. Walking and rocking new wave, copas and a fresh shave. I wanna be a rock star, pippin' in my new car. Hotties in the backyard, but I got nothing so far. Can I get up? Can I get up? Can I get up? And joining us here live in studio, we have Eric and Carlo from the band Best Not Broken. And uh, guys, that's a very, very catchy. I caught myself uh, singing along to it. So that's uh, that probably happened. I would imagine when you play that at shows, you probably get get people singing along, right? It does. It gets a real good response, singing, clapping. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think the video actually, I think people that see the video uh, might be amused because we released a video at the oh, same time. Okay. And uh, it's uh, it's one of our. We're very proud of it because we uh, we look like absolute buffoons. Well, I was going to say, let's be honest, <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous, <laughs> it, fully ridiculous. But um, we sort of captured the essence of the song. I think. Yeah, we did. And um, and it happened fast. I was shocked we were able to pull it together. But um, we would encourage your listeners if they like that tune to check out the video. Or I don't belong uh, on YouTube. It's mm. there, and uh, you'll get a good laugh there. And waiting for you. Very good, very good. Yeah, it's funny. That's another subject that's come up a lot on the show uh, lately is videos because there's some people. I don't know if you guys run into this at all. There's there's some people who have this perception that music videos are a, a, and a dead art form because you know MTV hasn't played videos in decades. And it's like it's funny, but I run into people who don't seem to realize that actually 
because of YouTube, there's more music videos being made than ever. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. Like when Beyonce puts out a new album, for example, you know, I've, she's got the money to do it. When she puts out a new album, every single song on the album has a video. Right. It's it's right. Uh, it's actually more than ever. So Pe- People want to see that multimedia entertainment. You know, they, they want to yeah. Yeah. They, they want to get a bigger picture of what certainly want to see the artist. You know, they're hoping to see the artist in the in the video. Um, and it just provides a, a more uh, multidimensional experience musical experience as opposed to just you know listening to music i mean uh and i think you might capture the interest a little more like people will listen mm-hmm. to the entire song as opposed to when you're streaming that's a good point you know they're gonna get a minute or so in like yeah, all right move to the next one move to the next one move to the next one click 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 but a video you're probably gonna watch the whole thing that's it's a- a, it's an interesting phenomenon i mean as a musician now you know that if you don't put a video out with a song you're missing listeners or viewers right. right you're miss, missing people that might otherwise see it right but it's also interesting because it truly changes the dynamic of how people experience the song right because yeah. in the old days when there was no video or now when there's no video you know you 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 come up with your own images right yeah but you're forced to follow the images that are put out uh in this video which i think sometimes is great and sometimes not but um but it's a new way of experiencing it for sure. Yeah. It's funny though it's like t- we're time traveling in a way because this is the same conversation that people had when uh, uh, on shows like this, when MTV right. first went on the air, yeah, and, right. and artists would talk about, yeah, you know, now you're, you know, you're assigning these images to the video, which to the song rather, which might be a good thing or might not, and you know, and I, I still want to be on MTV. Can we still do that? Yeah, I want my MTV. Me too. Wait, that sounds like a. <laughs> <laughs> there must be a. There must still be videos <laughs> on there somewhere, right? There must, I'm sure there, there are. There must be yeah. like a like a 20 minute video show or something sure somewhere on MTV. But yeah, reality television just completely took over in right. the, in the, I guess in the nineties. Right. I think it's been that yeah. long. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We haven't done our own reality show yet. We're going to leave that one alone. I think. <laughs> How many videos have you guys, uh, have you guys shot? What do you think? Carlo? Uh, that's a good question, but there's enough to keep you busy. Yeah. Entertain I, for a while. I, I would say probably 10. Yeah. Something like that. Maybe, maybe a little more. Some are uh, more involved than others. Yeah. Um, I know that the first one that I participated in was for um, Won't Stop Loving You, which was a um, very elaborate uh, production and a very moving video. Mm. I would say that was the most emotional video that we've made. And uh, if you put a bunch of people in a room, I guarantee you a bunch of them are going to be crying by the time they get to the end of that. That yeah. video. Wow. It's very, very touching. And it's a great song. Um, uh, we think so. But uh, our, our, it's another one. It's a fan favorite. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's from For an sure. earlier record. Yeah. And uh, they, they seem to love that song. So we, we like playing it. But so, so our videos range from serious to absolute insanity. Yeah. And uh, maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Um, now the videos, do you, do you have someone you work with on those or do you do them? Because we it, do. Okay. Cause I was going to say, we live in an era where really you can, you can do it all yourself. It's pretty remarkable. But. You can, if you're, if you're that talented, you know, yeah. we're, we're, only, we're just not that we talented. Are not that talented. <laughs> no. Uh, no, we have helpers. Yeah. Helpers are necessary for us. Do you work with uh, the same people on each? Have you worked with the same people on each video, or is there a production company? L- you work lately, with, we or? have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've uh, there's a, a company called 106 Studios out of Boston that we've been using recently. Uh, Travis Gray has been the lead guy for us, and um, that's gone very well. We've used other people in the past, but uh, Travis has been doing good work for us lately. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Um, and what are the live shows like? Do you guys uh, do you have any? Uh, you do any kind of elaborate stage show or anything, or do you, do you just play or? Uh... Any kind of theatrics, <laughs> or do you save that for the videos? <laughs> well, you know, I mean, so we have we do a range of shows. You know, I mean, we're yeah. we are primarily a uh, an original band, mm. but we do shows where we'll mix covers into um, into our shows. Some of them are more cover oriented, uh, but really the the focus of what we we do is is original material. Yeah. Um, but the reason I say that is because you know some of these shows tend to be a little more grueling, like three hours long or four hours long. Mm. And um, and the dynamic is a little bit different than a, a short and sweet, action-packed, true, best-not-broken original show. But we um, one of the things we try to do is really have great energy when we put on a show. And yeah. we try and go out and leave it all on the stage. We're all athletes, and uh, probably because we're... Um, 
we wish that we could still be as competitive as, as we once were. We had, the only place we can do it is on the stage, and so we occasionally sure. stub our toes and fall off of things. Uh, but uh, we try to do lots of jumping. Yep. Um, but uh, so yeah, it's a. We hope that it's an engaging and action-packed show. It should be that. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you, we. I, I'm reminded of a story. Maybe we should we should share of uh we 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 i don't, we I don't know what story you're going to tell so i, <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether we should share or not we uh, <laughs> we'll find out together <laughs> it was a it was a live concert we did at the Tup- tupelo yeah. tupelo music in in Derry. Oh, nice and, and it was outdoors yeah. um during the period where they were doing outdoor shows if you remember that yeah which was very clever quite frankly um anyway we we headlined a show and and uh as eric said it's a it's an action-packed show. I mean, the drummer just has to sit there most of the time, but um, the rest of the guys are moving around quite a bit on stage. And we had a choreographed piece of the show. Remember where we were I do. doing some things? And the point of the story is it was about 150 degrees out, and the sun was hitting that stage. Mm. And, you know, y- y- you're you're driven by the music and yeah. the fan interact. It was a sold-out show, so a lot of people... And you're feeding off that energy, but at some point, it's just not enough. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so hot out. Yeah. I, I, you know, I think we're all feeling a little oh my God. faint. And uh, there's a there's a particular thing you'll have to come to one of our shows. There's yeah. A particular thing we do at the end, where uh, this guy runs around, just does something absolutely crazy, and it was great. And you know, we're watching the whole things happen, and people are applauding, blah 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 blah, blah. and that's the end of the show. The encore is over. And we got to the back. You remember? And I he do. was he was white as a sheet. I thought oh he was going to. I literally thought he was going to pass out really? because he was so active, and it was so hot out. Yeah, um, and I, you I, can't uh, hydrate yeah. on stage, right. really. So yeah, yeah, you know, you're just giving it all, and uh, that was quite a quite a performance, I would say. That was a yeah. So um, I try to get a little exercise, and this this is one of those times where I almost didn't make it back to the stage. Wow, <laughs> I almost. And we've had a couple of those lately. In fact. Yeah. We were down in Salisbury a few weeks ago, and um, I almost didn't make it back to the stage, which would have been terrible because you guys would have had to clean up all by yourself. Yeah, somehow I feel like that was part of the plan. It might have been. But, uh, it might have been. Yeah. I, wow. was in the big, I was in the big band van. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, well, you know, I always say rock and roll should be sweaty, but uh, but you don't want you know heat stroke or anything like that either. <laughs> no, definitely try to keep it as safe as we can. I will tell you, our 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 fabulous bass player who couldn't make it today with his broken toe mm. uh, carries a fan with him every show. Oh, really? Yeah. He has a fan set up because I think he sweats the most of all of us. Oh my and, god! And and he and this fan is just always running. It doesn't well, matter. Well, actually, what the, the truth is, is there we have levels of fan i mean he has his standard fan yeah but then we have a super hot show we upgrade to the big fan big and then fans. we can actually yeah. double fan if we have to double fan oh. but i would say that um the worst so the one time when mark was sweating so much and there's nothing a fan could possibly do the, the video that we shot for the song kids which i think you played earlier yeah yeah had mark at the beginning in a kangaroo outfit and at the end, he had to go because we ran out of time and so i briefly had to play the kangaroo oh and i put on the kangaroo outfit and I couldn't feel the outfit because it was mush. It was oh. actually, it was mush. It was, was sweating probably so the most yeah. disgusting oh. thing I've ever felt oh, in my life. God. And um, <laughs> so I no longer, I no longer even will look at kangaroos. But does it make you feel closer to him? Now, Not at now all. That you've no, worn, I, I try to stay no, further away. No, now that you've worn his, uh, worn yeah, no. his sweat. No, Mark, if you're listening, I'm, I'm actually currently trying to get further away from you. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Eric, you ever do any radio or voiceover work or anything? Never. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever asked you that. Uh, I can't be the first one to ever ask you that. It's possible you are. I, I'm really? not sure. Wow. <laughs> no, I've never done it. You've Because nope. you've got the voice. Carlo, doesn't he have the voice? You've, you've got the voice for radio, yes, you think? definitely. You've yeah. got one of those voices I'm actually jealous of. Because I'm very, you know, I'm I'm able to evaluate myself pretty honestly. I think I know I have a good radio voice, but you have a great radio voice. I you've have never, a, you've never done a podcast or anything. Never done a podcast. Wow. No. no, no car commercials. Can you, can you, narrating uh, car commercials. You should do a car commercial. That <laughs> yes, would be awesome. That would be fun. Yeah. for real. Definitely do for that. real. Well, we need a hit. Maybe we can find a hit in the auto commercial. Do like a little jingle. Realm. Right? A jingle. Like a, yeah, car yeah. commercial jingle. Uh huh. Can you can you auto tune in uh, radio? Can you live auto tune? No, in radio? <laughs> <laughs> no. But I just I just imagine you narrating it. You know, you could narrate the. Uh, the, the I've never the tried portion. it. I mean, yeah. I you know I read I read books for people. 
Do you? Yeah, I, I do. There you go. Mostly my kids. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. They don't tell, they don't tell you they love your voice. They've never said that. <laughs> they're usually mad at me because it's bedtime and it's like, Dad, what are you doing? Right, right. Don't yeah. put us to bed. No, they're used to it. Uh, you see your voice. Um, Jay Fed in the chat says, uh, "Do you play birthday parties?" I think we have done parties. Well, remember the we time have... I jumped out of that cake? Oh, I do yeah. remember that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, That's we, different story. We do pri <laughs> we do private events occasionally. Most yeah. of what we do is in support of our music, but we do private yeah. events occasionally. Yep. So he's been asking. Uh, he's been looking for someone to play his wife's uh, birthday party, uh, Melanie's birthday party. I, cool. I, I believe it's in September. Now the thing is, uh, I should uh, tell you though, in case you you do get uh, you take a commission. I know. No, no, no. It's not that. Uh, he might uh, try to uh, get you to commit to uh, if you're going to go up there to commit to an ice bath. Oh. So I thought I should mention that just to kind of warn you All right. that that might be part of the deal. Okay. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, personally, I wouldn't do it. I, uh, you know, hypothermia, things like that. Apparently there are health benefits, but uh, I'm just worried about freezing to death. So I personally wouldn't do it, but I think I should forewarn you guys. Ice yeah, bath. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, something he does, and he, hmm. he invites people into the ice bath, apparently. Okay. So just uh, something to keep in mind. Gig uh, slash ice bath. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, you know, it could come to that. So okay. just so you know. We'll have to get our manager involved. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> there you go. Uh, by the way, uh, Miriam Banish uh, in the chat room says, uh, like the harmony, uh, referring to uh, the, the song that we uh, uh, played there, the single. Um, cool. Thank you. Yeah. What do you guys, so the vocals, uh, do you guys all sing or how does that work? I definitely don't. You don't. Oh, he, okay. He, no, he's he's being modest. He oh, does okay. actually sing. In fact, we've had some gigs where he'll he'll take the lead and do some crazy stuff. But uh, truth be told, the harmonies are actually a very important part of our sound. Mm. And uh, Mark and I really enjoy writing harmonies and singing harmonies, and that's something we we focus on. And it's part of most of the songs that you hear. Yeah. From us. No, I notice that. But Car Carlo, you sing live with the guys, I assume, or very seldom. Oh, really? Okay. All right. I've got a lot of work to do. I'm very busy back there. He is a busy guy. Yeah. 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 Well, well, that's the thing. I I had a, a band on recently with a singing drummer, where the drummer did the lead vocals, yeah. and that's something you very oh, yeah. rarely see. Uh huh. But it's such a physical instrument, so to have to play drums and sing, even just doing backing vocals, I you would, know, it yeah. must be. It's got to be hard to do. I think using... it would be tough. I I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how they do it. You know, they they. Sing a lot. Yeah. And uh, I don't think I could do it. Really? I don't think I could do it. Yeah. Number one, my, I don't think I can sing uh, well. <laughs> and uh, But it's a lot of work, you know, to, yeah. keep, that, to keep focused on that and just have the uh, the musician stuff just kind of happen automatically so you can focus on the singing. It's, yeah. It's quite a bit of work. It's impressive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're quite talented, those two. Yeah, yeah. Anna and I just sit back and play music. <laughs> we had a show, actually. It was actually at Blue Ocean Music Hall where we featured Carlo and Anna and, oh, uh singing. That's I'm right, we did. Who was that? I think that might have been the, when we were with the Gin Blossoms. Gin Blossoms, Hustler. I think it was, yeah. Um, oh. and, um, and actually, that was the last show where we ever allowed them to sing publicly together. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so that should tell you something there. <laughs> you guys played with the Gin Blossoms, huh? We did a we few did shows several with those shows guys. With really? Yeah, yeah. yeah several, yeah. yeah. Yep. I can see that. I can see that being a good, uh, yep, being a good, good pairing. Fit. Yeah, good fit. But I, I guess too, though, with with your sound, I mean, there's probably a lot of different bands you fit well with. Um, I would think, um, the, you know, your your sound it's it's very accessible, very radio friendly, but also sure. there's you know a mix of influences in there. Um, you know, the, the song "Kids" is is I like I said, I opened with that today. That's so catchy. But um, but it seems like everything is you know it's very sort of you know you've got those sing along choruses that you know really hook people in and uh, who can you tell me who's who's a, a band that you've um, are there any bands that you've opened for that were kind of um, maybe you went into it thinking I don't know if we fit has has there been any kind of an odd match that you've had with a band that you've opened for? Well, um, yes, I would say so. So uh, I, actually. I think Smashing Pumpkins will be interesting because the more I listen to them, the more I, yeah, I realize gonna... that they're much heavier than yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, than really we are now. You know, back in the day we were writing more rock oriented stuff, and now I kind of consider our stuff sort of indie pop. Yeah, and um, so it's veering away from that. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But you know, you, uh, it, you know, we used to occasionally play Bike Week, and I was we, oh. we've never been a biker band, right? And yeah, we, we yeah. went up there thinking they're going to throw us out of here, and actually. There are a lot of people that dug our yeah. stuff, so I yeah. I've learned you can't you can't make that judgment going into it. But um, probably the other one that was a weird fit was uh, Jason Derulo. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we were asked to come play with uh, with him, and it was just as he was like 
you know, at his prime. And, um, and it was weird, but it sort of was fine. It sort of went okay. Like, I, can, you know, I can see it working, though. Can you? Yeah, uh, because um, I'm trying to think now. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. What was his really big, big hit? I don't even remember. Because no, I, think I don't he, know. He had more than one single that did well, but there was one that was huge, and I can't remember. I can't remember what it was now either. Uh, that he had a short shelf life. I he think did. he was. He, he had come and gone pretty quick. He did. But um, but yeah, but I I can see that working. You know, um, because again, your sound is so accessible that you know, obviously, a lot of different you know different kinds of people are going to like it um is that something you do consciously like in, in terms of, of writing and and uh, recording the music is is it do you consciously try to make songs that um you know with with good hooks and and big you know sort of sing-along choruses i think that um you know every songwriter probably gravitates to something there's something that you know as you're noodling around on your guitar or humming melodies or whatever it may be there's something that catches you about it yeah and i find for me it's, uh, you know, I think I, I grew up listening to pop radio and, uh, uh, you know, from all eras, I enjoyed all of it. And, uh, so I think those, those melodies stick with me and those are the things, mm-hmm. you know, I find, I won't write a song unless I feel like there's a, a catchy melody that's going to draw you in somewhere in the song. And so right. that's usually the basis of it. And then you try to build around it. So um, I guess in that sense, it is intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are uh, we are approaching the end of the show. I do want to get one more uh, one more song in uh, at the end. But uh, guys, this has been wonderful. Thank you both so much. Thank Thanks you for, for having us, us Matt. Yeah, absolutely, much appreciated. Absolutely. And uh, what do you want to make sure our uh, our listeners know about where to find you online, social media, anything, website? We uh, are we are everywhere. Uh, we get that question sometimes, you know, uh, where can I find your music? And I think my answer is where, where can't you, I mean, you we're, should be able, we're yeah. literally on yeah. every streaming platform. Um, uh, we're on YouTube with the videos. We've got our website, uh, bestnotbroken.com. Yeah, bestnotbroken.com, yeah. That's um, kind of headquarters. I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, you know, all the basic stuff. I mean, you yeah. know, we're probably most active on Instagram and Facebook and that kind of stuff, and, and we keep updates on yeah, our Yeah, hit website. us up on Instagram. Yeah. You know, we'd love to, you know, have somebody, you know, make a comment. We uh, we like responding and interacting with our fans. You know, it's, it's great fun for us, you know, and if you've seen us at a show or you want to see us at a show, you know, give us a little, little shout out and we'll... Mm-hmm. We'll let you know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And uh, do, you, do you have any shows coming up this weekend that you want to plug? We're in, in Vermont, Vermont this yeah. weekend, right? Yeah, we'll, oh. yeah, we're playing up in Burlington, Vermont, a place called uh, Red Square. It's an outdoor show. Uh, get there early because it, it fills up fast. Yeah. And, uh, uh, especially if the weather's nice, I should say. If it's yeah. raining, True. doomsday. Yeah. Um, but it hasn't rained much this summer, so we should be okay. That's why Carlo <laughs> is wearing his red shorts. He has these on all week. Same pair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he yeah. can't take them off until the show. That's our deal. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. wow! <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's 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 your business. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, Matt, you have to close with that, right? <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Absolutely, guys. Thank you again so much. Uh, Mike from uh, Queen City Cabinetry says, uh, "Awesome guest today, Matt. Thank you." Um, yeah, guys, thank you so much. And we will end uh, with this track. This is called uh, "Low Lights." Um, this is, um, yeah, this is kind of a. Little, little darker. Yeah, it's a different. It's a different tune. Uh, this is a Mark tune. Um, this is one of the uh, one of the new singles that's coming out on our new EP. Very good. Oh, when is that out? By the way, the EP. Well, uh, it was supposed to be soon, and it's been pushed back a little. But I would expect it shortly after Labor Day. So check oh. our social media. It won't be long. Excellent, excellent. All right, so we're going to end with this. This is uh, thanks again, guys, and this is Low Lights from the band Best Not Broken. Check this out.
Frankenstein, and I'm the gecko, and I like it. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. 